Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Bruce Wilson. For all of you that are new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button either right now or throughout the video. Today we have our international cab over back here on the channel once again. It has been the hot topic on YouTube lately. I was just notified guys, we are number 13 on trending. Huge shout out to all of you viewers. Thank you very much. Today we are doing an oil change and yes, this thing takes like nine freaking gallons of oil or eight, something like that. So about nine gallons just in case. We've got some new oil filters here. Um, I didn't know what fuel filter it took, but Napa said there are three different ones. So we got three different filters with return what we don't use. And I've got an air brake line and some repair fittings because the power divider back here on the front axle is broken. So I got six feet so that we can replace it as far up in the lines here as possible to get rid of the brittle. Cause you guys can see how easy it just freaking breaks like that, like nothing. So that being said, we're gonna get the cab jacked up here in a moment and uh, start assessing what I do to get the oil drained out of her. So we got the cab all jacked up. Went nice and easy as you guys seen on the old camcorder there. Now we got our hoses repaired. Um, I did forget that I did bring my Milwaukee electric grease gun with a couple tubes of grease from the shop. Cause there are freaking grease fittings everywhere on this thing, on the pins for the leaf springs, on the steering, on the U-joints, on the shifter linkage for the transmission, which is a little bit stiff. And you, and you can see where the linkage goes up here in the transmission for the shifter assembly up there. So we're gonna be greasing all that up today also. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get the mess with the air filter or not, but I got a new fuel filter. So right here's one of the fuel filters we're gonna change. Um, I need to lube up the throttle linkage inside the cab because it's a little, it's a little, uh, not how it needs to be it's a little stiff so we're gonna get that checked out and uh kind of run over as many things as possible and i'm definitely gonna find this engine serial number it must probably right there so i'm gonna find out what that is right now so you guys comment below what engine we've got all right everyone so right here is where the engine serial plate should be it's under all this stuff somewhere oh yeah it's in there we just got 40 years of grease and grime oh there she is hey on there well that's definitely a Cummins motor eh all right well there's I see something that's good it looks like we've got a 350 Cummins makes 350 horsepower at 1800 RPMs. Um, let's see, where's the serial number? Engine serial number, it's gotta be here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Serial number is a 32096, maybe that's it? Yeah, it's gotta be it. 1987. So we've got a 1987. 350 big cam Cummins. It's 855 cubic inches, so she's a big girl. Oh, there's the engine identification. 855 093E797. So 797 is the CPL number. That'll tell us the exact horsepower and all that good stuff. So for a lot of you that are Cummins um, certified and know all this good information I just gave you guys, maybe you can comment down below and let me know what engine we are for sure working with. And uh we're gonna see if we can start draining some oil out of it. Gotta find some buckets first. Well, folks, we are underneath the truck and look at this big giant freaking oil pan. Oh, it's on the other dang side. That's the wrong plug. We're we'll learning something every day. Um, here's the air tanks. We are gonna empty those here shortly. Um, there's a drain right there. There's a drain on the back side of this one. So we're gonna get to that second. But I guess I need to go to the other side now because the drain's on that side. So folks, what we're going to do is drain it from this side of the oil pan and then go to the other side with a shorter bucket. But this one, I can fit five gallon buckets under. So, all right, let's see how nasty this stuff is. Oh yeah, it's thick. This bucket's going to fill up quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is honestly the first time I've changed oil on a semi before, guys. Done tons of tractors and trucks, but first time on a semi. Oil bucket's filling up quick. <sighs> Over 20 year old freaking oil in this thing. That's crazy. 
All right, let's try to make a big mess and drop this plug. That would be good. All right, plugged off. I'm gonna swap buckets out and be right back. Okay, we got our concrete bucket under there so we can get this oil drained out. Time to let some more out. See, it should be the rest of it coming out now, hopefully. All right, well, we're gonna let this drain, guys, and then uh, go mess with the filters in a second. Okay, folks, so we're coming over here to this side of the engine to drain all the oil out of here. Because it's dirty. Uh oh. Oh, that's the hose for the. Yeah, I gotta take that off. That was something else. But look at them freaking oil filters are massive compared to my hand. Jesus. So, I'm gonna get that big nut busted loose right there. Got my vice grip adjustable right there and see if we can get the rest of the oil drained out. So, I got that mother broke loose because it was tight. Very, very tight. I'm gonna let the rest of this oil drain out into a little bit smaller pan. There we go. There should be all that nasty sludgy stuff coming out now. It's pretty pretty clean for sitting that long. It's filling that pan up quick. <laughs> Hopefully we got enough room. I don't know. Come on, slow down. Oh. Shit. Yeah, I'll get that bucket and I'll just dump it into the bucket right quick. Damn, I hope I got enough oil because the internet said it only held like 8 gallons, but we've got about 10 drained out of it now. See how much more comes out right here. Hopefully not too much more. That thing's stuck. Oh. That's some dark oil. So we got all of our oil drained out of this thing. See if we can get these huge filters off this monster. And we're gonna get the oil drain pan put under there so it don't make a mess in the grass and kill the earth and the tree huggers get all upset. So I gotta go find a big pair of channel locks. Okay, so we got our giant channel locks here. See if we can turn these monster filters loose. Well, that one came loose pretty easy. I already got some of these pretty much broke loose, but they're still not loose as they should be or could be. All right. So there's the, oh, they're already starting to pour. I think this right here is a big oil, yeah, this is an oil cooler, so. Oh, it's gonna that's probably gonna drain out and then Big behemoth. This is going in the oil pan down below. There we go. So we've got our filters off there, guys. Got them over there draining in the bucket. Um, whenever you change filters on anything, you want to make sure that the O-ring that you drain off isn't still on there, and it's not. And you'll see what I'm talking about on these new filters here in just a moment. But we're going to pre-fill them all the way up to the top as much as possible with some new oil from Napa, 15W40 with zinc additive in it already. And you see these big rubber o-rings right there that's what you want to make sure is on your new filter and not on the filter base where you pulled them off oh, damn. all right let's see if we can get her filled up The reason we do this is so that when the engine oil does start pumping, the filters already have oil in them, so there's not a bunch of air in the system. So these probably hold, I want to say a couple quarts a piece. Yeah, look at these. These are big ones. All right, let that air bubble out of there. So we're gonna get both these filters filled up and we'll get them on the truck in just a moment. So right here, folks, is where the oil goes in the engine. Looks pretty clean still. And uh, here's the oil dipstick. She's kind of flopping around there. So we're going to have to make something to hold it after a while. But we're going to start pouring some oil down in her and get her filled up. We got about nine gallons drained out of it. And I bought nine gallons of oil. Um, we may need to go get an extra gallon. But being a gallon low will probably be okay for now. So I don't know which funnel is going to work best. <laughs> I guess that's how we're going to have to hold it. It's a lot of holding, a lot of oil. Let me wipe the inside of that funnel out right quick. Okay, so I got a drain bucket stuck under there, so we're not leaking fuel all over the earth. 
I don't think we were really going to. This thing feels empty. <laughs> yep, right in the bucket it went. Oh, that fuel looks, oh, look how nasty that is, man. That fuel stinks, probably why it runs like crap. Yeah. Fuel starting to separate, that's our next adventure, is draining these tanks out, getting the dent out of that one, and putting some fresh diesel in it. Yeah, that stuff smells like, almost smells like gas, it smells really bad. We'll pour it out here so you guys can see just how nasty it is. Diesel's not supposed to be that color. So, it's a 20 year old diesel for you guys. She still starts and runs on it though. So, next project's getting the stuff drained out and putting some fresh diesel in her. And see if we can get this fuel filter changed out though. See, so it's gonna be a 3109. So, yep, we got one of them, right? So, that's a plus. So, we'll go ahead and change this. Probably change it again after a while, but we'll go ahead and get it changed out now, anyways. I think I'm also going to go ahead and pre-fill this one. I do have some fresh diesel in the truck here. Just so I don't have to worry about bleeding it and having to pump all that diesel up into the engine. I'm going to get my can of diesel right here. And fill this one up. So I've got this filter full of fuel. And the reason that oil or that diesel looks nastier is because this is a low sulfur diesel. And back in the day, probably when that diesel was put in there, it was high sulfur. It was a little bit thicker and actually had more oil in it stuff, which was better for these engines. But now I have to deal with low sulfur diesel low sulfur diesel the chris got the engine completely full of oil i got the fuel filter changed i'm grabbing a pair of cutter pliers now i'm going to repair the airline back here for the rear end splitter with these parts that i got you guys saw that this is a slide together butt connector and a new ferrule because the other piece of it's already on there right there so i'm gonna trace this airline right there is where it's at Oh, that felt great. Probably as far down as possible. And we're gonna re reconnect it. Okay, everyone, so we've got our new quarter inch airline and we've got a buck connector. These are actually a lot nicer than the older ones. I don't think they hold as well, but it'll work for what we're doing for now um, as the ferrule type. But they just slide in the brake line just like that and it's sealed. And then if you ever need to disconnect it, you just push it together and pull it apart. So I'm gonna slide this. I was able to cut the old air, air line further up in the loom inside here and found a good hard piece of it. There's not brittle or anything right there. So I'm gonna feed this line through there and get it hooked back up. This is one of our air leaks that it had on the, I think, auxiliary air. Correct me if I'm wrong. Little butt connecty here. Now we're gonna shove it over the new one down, or the old one. Right there. That's all connected. So now we've got our new supply line for our power divider back here. We're gonna try to feed this off of here if we can. Maybe. There it goes. Perfect. brittle one out yeah, I think it's like the exact length <laughs> we got it feed it, fed through the holder there and we're gonna show over that in just a second but first I've got to get my new ferrule right here which is a compression fitting Let's see if I can manage to not lose it well Alright, so there's that. Now we're going to put the freaking little nut here. Now what we're going to do is put our nut over it first. Just like that. Shove our ferrule down over it. Then I'm going to shove the air hose over that little fitting there. The ferrule's going to go inside and we're going to tighten this baby back down and it will crimp her down. And we will have a working power divider there. You don't want to go too tight where it cuts that line, but we're going to get her tight to where this line doesn't want to turn in there anymore. And that should be it. 
our power divider air leak is fixed. We're not gonna touch that because it looks super brittle. Maybe we'll fix that one another day for our sliding hitch there. But now that I've got all of our airlines fixed, we got the oil change, we got our fuel filter change. We're gonna have to go get a, probably about a gallon of oil and put in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grease this up, but we're gonna do the oil on another day. I'm gonna find every grease fitting on this thing. I've got my Milwaukee battery powered grease gun. We're gonna tear up the grease fittings now, boys. So we've got her in high speed power mode. We're gonna put her to work. Yep, and these things are gonna take a solid 10, 15 bumps. All right, I'm gonna find the next. Right down here on all these steering arms, everything needs grease. A little bit of fresh grease is gonna love it. There's another fitting right there. Oh, freaking everything. All right, now that one's full. We got our king pins gotta be filled up. There she goes. That one took grease. Hopefully they all take grease. We don't have to worry about taking them apart and cleaning them and Gotta be a grease fitting on the lower one. Yep. All right, that one's full. Looks like right in here is right here, that one. We got our brake rod, we got grease. That one's full. Is there a grease fitting anywhere else on here? There's another one. There are grease fittings everywhere. That's full. There's probably another one right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. Yep. Could you imagine having to do this with your old pumpity pump? <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a grease fitting on this cylinder. Those are like widow webs. That's one. If that's, a, that's, yeah, that's one also. So I can get her on and move this. Way. It looks like it's probably got enough grease in it, but we're going to go ahead and hit it anyways. Alright. There's probably a grease fitting on this cab swivel here. I'm sure we're going to miss some. Oh yeah, for sure. But we'll have the grease gun handy to grease them. It's probably grease. There's a greaser on this freaking steering shaft. <laughs> <laughs> that looks all look, looks like it's got plenty of grease in it. So, oh, we got to grease the front leaf spring pin. Uh-oh, you know what that sound is. Out. We're out. Give the baby a pull. Slide that out just like so. Grab a pair of pliers. You gotta be very careful this thing because it will cut you so fast. It's about to rain here. Mm-hmm. over in there and a pop top these are nice because they like bleed themselves out the old ones you had to sit there and mess with oh yeah every time you change it out just like that okay you get this front leaf spring pin okay guys so you see what we did on this one corner of the truck for the front we're into the same the other side then we're gonna move on here to the back. Now we're moving on to the back. We're gonna start the most obvious grease fittings on the fifth wheel here. I see it move, it popped up. Mm -hmm. Give her a good 25 pumps. Probably one up in here somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. Afraid to stick my fingers in some of these places. I don't know what's gonna find in there. All right, let's find some more fittings. There's gotta be, I know there's fittings on all the brake rods. We'll do the rear end first. Everyone can see those. And all the brake rods in here. You can get it from the top. It's right here. One. I'm just glad to see that these are all taking grease and not giving us a huge hassle. So I have to take them all apart. Right, there's another one. Fifty 
squirts. It's nice it's taking it in though. I know, that is nice. Well, our brakes are greased up back here. I think that's the only two grease fittings there. We're gonna do the brakes on the fr front axle here. I guess we'll grease this side of the slider up. Throw that up there for now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone, we're laying in the middle of the truck here. I'm gonna try to grease these dry shafts up here because we're currently under the fifth wheel and grease all the brakes up. And we'll get that stuck right there. Brake one. If it holds, oh, it's, well, maybe, maybe I'll stay on it. Yep, grease coming out the bottom. That's good, I think. Mm -hmm. Hmm, well, that one's not good. The automatic adjuster isn't there. Well, guys, I just seen something, I think pretty positive there's an automatic adjuster supposed to be inside here um, you uh, semi truck nuts maybe you guys can comment let me know okay, you can see it right here on this side where it is so maybe we need to uh, see about getting that fixed or replacing it obviously okay folks we're climbed up in this thing we're gonna see about greasing this dry shaft and you do we got the rear one done that was pretty tough to get back in there but this is a big u-joint Oh, she's taking grease. That's good. Oh, look at all of them coming out here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that one's got grease in her. So we can turn around in here. And fill this slider up here. Oh, boy. Had to be one, didn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Grease coming out of there. Very slow. Just isn't gonna take any. I guess what I'm gonna do there is not today, but another day I'll pull that. I'll go get the grease fittings from our shop, bring some home. We have to change that grease fitting out and grease it. We can grease the shifter linkage. Grease fitting up in here. This should make it shift a lot nicer. There we go. There's that one. There's another one. Jeez. We're working out everywhere. <laughs> Good thing we ain't got a show truck here or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got our dry shafts greased. Now you can grease the front right side of the truck and then put some grease on that shifter assembly up there and try to wipe some of this grease off. Beanie's gonna be walking around out here in the yard with the grease on his toes and come in the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, so we've got it full of oil. I'm gonna tighten up the oil filled thing there. I can check the oil. I'm gonna do the honors. I have to wipe her down first. Cedar back in there. All right. How are we looking? Over, turned over. All right. So we need to add a gallon, probably yeah. a solid gallon. Yeah. We'll be good. Okay, everyone. So we're gonna start this thing up. I did put fuel in the fuel filter there, so we should be good to go. Um, it's in neutral. See if we can fire it up and recheck the oil. Started up really smooth. Well, I guess me priming our fuel filter up helped. I put nice clean diesel in it too. A lot of things that could be changing here, but. Cool. All right, we'll shut her down and check the oil. 
there you have it guys we changed our 20 year old plus that's older than 20 years old oil because we don't know when the last time those oils actually changed because we know it was parked in 1998 um so we don't know when it was actually changed before that but these filters are definitely ancient they were rusty fuel filter and diesel is disgusting but uh we're gonna get the cab folder back down on the next video we're gonna be stripping all the unnecessary wiring out of here that was wired into here for like brake lights on an auxiliary trailer and stuff like that um seeing about the rear brake issue there and maybe who knows we're gonna do a burnout so if you smash the like button drop a comment down below if you see anything we overlooked or did wrong and also let me know some information on this engine guys maybe you can send me a link or two um you know some home performance parts for it we're definitely gonna do definitely gonna be turning it up a little bit and changing and updating the turbo that's on this engine and subscribe to the channel guys my name is bruce wilson i appreciate all the support we've gotten recently and we'll catch you guys later peace out